everyone. You can kindly get seated. We are ready to get started now. Yeah, if you settle in, we'll we'll get started. It's four o'clock. Is everybody ready for the program? We are, right? Great. We are too. I know Sally's. She can't wait to start performing. So please get seated. Good evening. I am Gauri Girubhatta, the MC for the Arunyatram of Sai Ling Shah, disciple of Guru Srimati Bina Menon, founder and director of Kalashri School of Arts. On behalf of Guru Srimati Bina Menon, the Kalashri School of Arts, the Shah family, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. This is a very important day for Saili, as it marks a significant milestone in her dance journey. She is the student of Guru Bina Menon, performing her Arunyetram in three classical dance forms from South India, namely Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, and Mohiniyattam. An Arunyetram is indeed a proud moment for the Guru, the student, the parents, siblings, and the entire village that stands behind this team. It exemplifies years of hard work, rigor, and training on the part of the guru and the student. And today's performance is the result of this teamwork. You are about to witness a spectacular show, and I promise it will be a visual treat and you're going to walk away with some beautiful memories from this evening. I'll now give a quick uh, brief introduction about myself. I come from a family that is very passionate about Carnatic music and classical dance. I started learning Bharatanatyam from Guru Aruna Subramanyam and performed my Arangetram under her guidance over 30 years ago in New Delhi, India. After immigrating to the U.S., I continued learning Bharatanatyam under Guru Radha Bala Subramanyam, Guru Swati Bise, and Guru Sadhna Paranji, and had the opportunity to perform solo and in dance ballets. During these years, I also learned some fundamentals of Kuchipuri and Odissi dance forms. Dance has played an important role in my physical and emotional well being, and I continue to cultivate my passion for dance by participating in Arangetrams as an MC providing state support, and as a member of the audience. We will now begin Sai's Arangetram with an auspicious ceremony called the Shalange Puja, or Blessing of the Bells, by Guru Bina Menon and the parents of the dancer. After the Shalange Puja, there will be an invocatory prayer by our esteemed orchestra. Srimati Savitri Ramanan, our vocalist for this evening, who will be accompanied by Sri Murali Balachandran on the Mridangam, Kumari Shweta Narsimhan on the violin, Sri Murti Mamidanna on the flute, and Kumari Pavitra Sundar on keyboard. Saini will then perform the first set of dances, Pushpanjali, a pure dance, Gajananam, which is a shloka or a short verse, and Venkata Chala Nilayam, a devotional song. I'll share the description for these dances after our dancer performs these items. I now request Mr. Sujit to play the music to begin the ceremony.
Let's welcome Sai's grandmother, Mrs. Varalakshmi Sundaram. Parents, Dr. Siva and Sukhim Shah. Siblings, Sanjana and Shivani Shah. And her, and her uncle and aunt, Shankar and Ambika Sundaram, with their children, Kesan and Niam.
would you all agree with that? I think science is the I think there was just so much energy on the stage. So how about we all reciprocate from the audience with that same level of energy? Let's give one more round of applause. Sadi comes, performs, and leaves the stage. I think she will enjoy that very much. So thank you. So let me just give a little bit about the three pieces that we just witnessed. Pushpanjali is an invocatory dance piece performed at the beginning of a Bharatanatyam recital. It serves as an offering to the gods and goddesses, invoking their blessings and setting a devotional tone for the performance. The word Pushpanjali itself means offering of flowers. During Pushpanjali, the dancer offers flowers to the divine, symbolizing respect, gratitude, and humility. The choreography of Pushpanjali typically includes slow, graceful movements, rhythmic patterns, and expressive gestures, or the mudras, all accompanied by melodic music and chanting of Sanskrit verses. It is an auspicious and reverential start to a Bharatanatyam performance, setting the stage for the unfolding of the dancer's artistry and expression. Pushpanjali was followed by a short sloka on Ganesha, and that was Gajananam Bhuta Ganadi Sevita. It's a popular invo invocation dedicated to Lord Ganesha the elephant-headed deity in Hinduism, also known as the remover of obstacles. The shloka glorifies Lord Ganesha, acknowledging his divine attributes and seeking his blessings for the removal of obstacles and the attainment of success and prosperity. Lord Ganesha, whose head is like that of an elephant, symbolizes wisdom, strength, and auspiciousness. He is the leader of the Bhutaganas, which are various categories of beings like spirits, ghosts, and supernatural entities, and is worshipped by these beings and is their protector. He who enjoys eating ripe mangoes and jambu, or rose apple fruits. It symbolizes his preference for simple offerings made with devotion. As the son of Goddess Uma, which is another name of Parvati, the wife of Lord Shiva, he is the destroyer of sorrow and obstacles in the lives of his devotees. The shloka concludes by expressing reverence and devotion to Lord Ganesha, whose lotus feet are worshipped for the removal of obstacles and for bestowing blessings upon devotees. Saini then performed Kasturi Tilakam, a Sanskrit verse that describes the divine beauty of Lord Venkateshwara, also known as Lord Balaji, who is worshipped predominantly in the Thirumala Venkateshwara temple in Andhra Pradesh, India, and is also the main deity of this temple here where we are all gathered today. The shloka was followed by Venkata Chalanilayam. The lyrics of the song praise the glory and divine attributes of Lord Venkateshwara, who is described as the resident or Nilayam of Venkatachala, another name for the sacred Thirumala hills. The song emphasizes Lord Venkateshwara's role as the bestower of blessings, remover of obstacles, and the protector of his de devotees. It recounts his incarnations, miraculous deeds, and divine qualities such as compassion, grace, and omnipotence. The lyrics also express the devotee's unwavering faith and devotion to the deity, seeking his guidance, grace, and eternal presence in their lives. One of the stories that was depicted by Saidi in this piece was Gajendra Moksha which is a famous episode 
from the ancient Hindu scripture, the Bhagavata Purana. It tells the story of Gajendra, the king of elephants, who once lived in a beautiful garden called Trikuta. One day, while enjoying the pleasures of his kingdom with his family and friends, Gajendra was attacked by a powerful crocodile in the lake. Despite his strength, Gajendra found himself unable to free himself from the grip of the crocodile. Realizing his helplessness, Gajendra called out to Lord Vishnu, the supreme deity for help. Moved by Gajendra's sincere prayers, Lord Vishnu, riding on the divine mount Garuda, swiftly appeared on the sea. And using his Sudarshana Chakra, Lord Vishnu severed the crocodile's grip and saved Gajendra. In this act of divine intervention, Gajendra was liberated from the cycle of birth and death, achieving moksha or liberation. The story of Gajendra Moksha symbolizes the power of surrender and devotion to the divine illustrating that sincere prayers offered with faith are always answered. It is often interpreted as a metaphor for the struggles of human life and the ultimate liberation attainable through devotion to God. At the end, Saini also depicted the scenes from the Darshanam at Tirupati, which is considered highly auspicious and attracts millions of devotees from around the world. It is a deeply spiritual experience where devotees wait patiently in long queues to catch a glimpse of the divine deity and offer their prayers and offerings, which generally last a few seconds. The darshan experience is believed to be a direct encounter with the divine presence of Lord Venkateshwara, bringing peace, fulfillment, and spiritual upliftment to the devotees. Venkatachalanilayam was composed by Sri Purandar Dasa, in Ragam, Sindhu Bhairavi, and Adi Tagal. I will now invite Saini's parents, Dr. Subha Shah and Dr. Sukhin Shah, the proud parents, to come to the stage and welcome you. to go to school one day without the right pair of socks to today 
she has learned what excellence requires, grit and an amazing attitude. And through this process, she has balanced school, dance, and her extracurricular activities that I think most people would struggle with, with her characteristic, kind, and gentle nature. We love you so much, Siley, and are so proud of you. And so, in conclusion, I would like to share one of my favorite parables. Some of you may have heard a similar story. A young student, Abe, learns from his teacher about adversity and change. He is asked to place an egg, a carrot, and a coffee bean in boiling water and record his scientific observations. The egg hardens, the carrot softens, but the coffee bean turns the water into coffee, transforming the very water itself. This story about adversity, the boiling water, and what happens and how we react to it emphasizes the power of positivity, resilience, and personal transformation, encouraging one to thrive in challenging situations by embracing change and impacting their surroundings positively. And with that, Siley, go out into the world, do great things, and make a positive impact for society. Thank you. Namaskar, and welcome to Siley's RMG Trump. Thursday night was an amazing night in our house. We all sat in our basement and watched the orchestra rehearsal, where we could feel the electricity as Savitri Anji sang, the Mirthankam danced, the flute, the keyboard, and the violin played, all the while Bina Anji, the master conductor, pulling all of the pieces, pieces together, allowing Saidi to energize the stage. To witness this so up close, we were simply in awe. At the end of the performance, I asked the orchestra, how do we make something like this happen in our house again? To which they looked around the room, they saw Sanjana, Shivani, and Saidi, and told me, I'd run out of kids. <laughs> but I thought about it. I have two nephews. <laughs> Dance has been a beautiful part of our lives and has given us unimaginable joy. Sukin mentioned that during movie night, he is drawn to documentaries. He didn't say that most of the time that's not what we want to watch. Um, and he also didn't say that most of many of the nights, he actually lands on Sanjana and Shivani's Arangetra. This connection to dance, connection to our culture, an enormous part of our lives, is because of Guru Bina Men. It's really hard for me to describe who Bina Anti is to our family. The definition of guru is a spiritual teacher, especially someone who imparts initiation. Bina Anti has taught my girls that they are resilient, they can perform under pressure, they can receive feedback, and they are not perfect, but they can continuously improve. Her connection to dance, Inandis, is truly divine. It radiates from her. We're drawn to it and pulled towards her. After Sanjana and Shivani's Aranyatram, the natural question for most people was, do you think Saili will want to perform one? To which I usually would give the politically correct answer and say, mm, I'm not sure, but I hope so. What I actually knew in my heart was, if given the opportunity, Saili would definitely perform an Iron Gate drum. The reason I knew this is because Saili is driven, she is disciplined, and she is hardworking, and she wanted to do it. When Shankar and Ambika got engaged, Saili was not even two years old. I had decided, like I usually do, uh, that we were going to put on a dance performance. So, so again, myself, Sanjana Shivani, and Maya, my cousin's daughter, all performed Kajarari. During those rehearsals, Saili would run around us in her diaper, imitating the steps that she then called Shaky Shaky, 
And if we didn't give her enough attention or tried to actually do what we were supposed to do, she would just turn off the music. <laughs> she wanted to be a part of it. So when we decided to perform again at their wedding, I put together a simple piece of choreography at the end of the performance just so she could participate as well. That persistence has led to this Arangetrum. Thank you, Binanti, for making Saidi's Arangetrum a reality. On behalf of Amma, the Sundaram Shah family, thank you all for being here to support Saidi, and we really hope you enjoy the rest of the program. We are ready for our next item. This is going to be a padam called Pivare Ramarasam. It's a soul stirring composition by Sri Sadasiva Brahmendra that celebrates the divine essence of Lord Rama. The lyrics express devotion to Lord Rama, Rama describing his divine qualities, beauty, and the bliss experienced by those who immerse themselves in this divine essence. The song invites devotees to drink deeply from the nectar of Rama's names and attributes, which are said to bestow inner peace, joy, and spiritual fulfillment. In this item, Saili will depict two stories. The first one is that of a decoit, who becomes the revered sage Valmiki. Valmiki, originally known as Ratnakara, was a notorious dacoit who lived in the forests of ancient India. He would ambush and loot travelers passing through his territory, causing terror and misery to many. The great sage Narada Mahamuni, who was known for his divine wisdom, took on the task to transform the dacoit. Sage Narada advised him to chant the name of Rama for his spiritual upliftment and redemption. However, due to his previous sinful nature and lack of understanding, Valmiki initially found it difficult to pronounce the name of Rama properly. Instead, he, in in, he chanted as Mara Mara, which means kill, kill in Sanskrit. But as Valmiki continued his intense penance and devotion, the repetition of Mara Mara became Rama Rama. Lord Rama then appears before him and blesses him to write the Indian epic, the Ramayana, which narrates the life and deeds of Lord Rama. The second story is Jatayu Moksha, a poignant and significant episode from the Ramayana. When Ramana abducted Sita, the wife of Lord Rama, Jatayu witnessed the abduction and despite being old and frail, he courageously confronted Ravana in a valiant, a valiant attempt to rescue Sita and protect her honor. A fierce battle ensued between Jatayu and Ravana, but despite his best efforts, Jatayu was ultimately overpowered by the mighty king, uh, demon king. With his last breaths, Jatayu narrated the events of Sita's abduction to Lord Rama and expressed his deep sorrow for being unable to prevent it. Grateful for Jatayu's noble sacrifice and unwavering devotion, Lord Rama granted him moksha, or liberation from the cycle of birth and death. Jatayu's soul ascended to the heavens where he attained eternal peace and bliss. This devotional song is in Radham Ayin Bhairav and Talam Adi. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll present Vibare Ramanas.
now introduce each of these musicians. We start with our vocalist for this evening, Srimati Savitri Ramanan. Classical music 
under great teachers such as the late Sri H. A. S. Mani of Bombay, music maestro Sri T. K. Govinda Rao, and the Bombay sisters Srimati C. Saroja and C. Lalita. Srimati Savitri has performed widely in India, United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, and the United States, and under reputed organ organizations such as Lincoln Center, the American Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian Institute, University of Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts Institute of Technology Music Departments. Srimati Savitri has become indispensable as a vocalist for dance at Arangetrams and other dance performances due to her skill in both music and dance. Her knowledge of Bharatanatyam and folk dances of India found full expression in a series of extraordinary dance ballets such as Ashtalakshmi Andal Kalyanam, Adi Parashakti, Sita Ramakatha, and Shiva Purana. In January of 2016, Panchali Shantam a unique poetic story written by Mahakavi Bhartiya was set to tune and dance by Mrs. Savitri and her daughter Arati Ramanan and was inaugurated under the auspices of New York Tamil Sangha. Her recent production on Rani Velut Nachya, the Queen of Ramanathapuram in Tamil Nadu, who fought the British during 19th century with women soldiers in the guerrilla warfare style, was choreo choreo choreographed and inaugurated a special presentation for the Pongal Festival show under the auspices of New York Temple Sangam. At the request of Hindu Temple Society in Flushing, for their 40th anniversary, Mrs. Savitriji and her daughter choreographed and presented Ashtanayika. Srimati Savitri has been awarded many titles and accolades for her service to music and community including the Isai Bani by the New York Tamil Sangam, Gana Vidya Visharade by Baswa International New York, Distingu distinguished leadership in raising the social and economic status of women as a performing artist and teacher by Pragati Inc., a women's organization. She won the pres prestigious Best Vocalist Award at the reputed Indian, Indian Fine Arts Society in India, for her performance in the 1999-2000 music festival conducted in Chennai, India. In 2011, the India Center inducted Savitriji into their Hall of Fame for her dedication as a teacher of Indian classical fine arts. Recently, World Ayappa Seva Trust honored her for her service to art and culture. Srimati Savitri Ramanan founded Muktambar Fine Arts, Inc. and has been teaching music and dance in New York for over three decades. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Srimati Sadatri Ramana a big round. <laughs> On the percussion for this evening's performance is Sri Murali Balachandra. dancers and musicians. He studied Mridangam under his doc father, Dr. C.G. Balachandran, and was introduced to Bharatanatyam by his mother, Usha. Murali is a versatile percussionist who is equally at ease playing traditional Indian percussion instruments like the Mridangam, the Kanjira, the Tabla, the Ghatam, and the Morsing. She really has performed in countries including New Zealand, Canada, and Indonesia. He has performed on Broadway and at major venues like the Lincoln Center, the American Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Murli is based in New York City and has had the privilege of accompanying leading Indian musicians and dancers, including Padma Shri Arya Lakshmanan, Padma Shri Ramli Ibrahim, Padma Shri Shodhana, Padma Bhushan Trichu Ramachandran, Padma Bhushan Kamala Lakshmi Narayanan, and Padma Vibhushan K.J. Yesudas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear Mr. Burli Kalshan.
Our violinist for this evening is Kumari Shweta Narsimha. is a senior student of late Srimati Gauri Ramakrishnan, from whom she was privileged to learn for 16 years. Shweta started learning violin at the age of six from Dr. Narayan, Ra Narayan Raman in Indianapolis and was taught by several violinists including Sri Purna, Purna Chandra Rao, Trichy Sri Satyamurti and Srimati Lalguri Vijayalakshmi. She enjoys playing for Carnatic vocal, instrumental, Bharatanatyam, and Kuchipuri programs around the, the country and in India. Shweta works to support the growth and development of public school educators in Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause. For <laughs> On the flute for this evening's performance, is Sri Murti Mamidana. Sri Murti Mamidana was initiated into Carnatic music by his parents at an early age. He received training in vocal music under Srimati Annapurna Patri, a disciple of Sri N.C.H. Krishnamacharya who belongs to St. Yagaraja's Shishya Palankara. He was later trained in Carnatic flute under the guidance of late Sri V. Nagaraju, who was a top-rate Carnatic flautist in All India Radio Hyderabad. Sri Murti Mamidana has also been fortunate to train under late Sri Mandaba Mandabala Sarma, a disciple of legendary flautist Sri T. R. Mahalingam. He resides in Brookville, Connecticut, and regularly performs at local music festivals and dance recitals. Sri Murti enjoys being part of Dance Arangetra Music Ensemble and is honored to be able to express his passion for Carnatic music. Another round of applause for Sri Murti. On the keyboard is Kumari Pavitra Sundar. has been learning both Carnatic vocal music and Bharatanatyam from Srimati Savitri Ramanand since childhood. She has completed her Arangetram for both music and dance and gives many stage performances. Pavitra has given dance, music and dance performances and concerts in organizations and venues such as Shrutilaya, Simana, Saraswati Awards, Utsa, Hindu Temple Society of North America, Pamona Raghunatha Temple, Staten Island Rama Temple, the Brooklyn Arts Council, the American Museum of Natural History, and Muktamba Fine Arts Dance Dramas, and in India as well. Pavitra also plays the keyboard and accompanies many dance and music programs in the tri-state area. She is part of the Muktamba Fine Arts Bhatya Vrindam and has played the keyboard for recordings for dance dramas. She is a high school physics teacher by profession. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for So as Sai prepares for the next item, just wanted to share a few words about Bharatanatyam, which was the dance style that you witnessed in the preceding items. Bharatanatyam is considered one of the oldest and most popular dance forms that originated in Tanjore district in Tamil Nadu. The origin of this dance can be traced to, the, to say Bharatamath Muni's Nati Shastra. The dance name is derived from Bha, which is Bhava or expressions, Ra for Raga or melody, Ta for Tara or rhythm, and Natyam, which means dance. Additionally, the three elements of Bharatanatyam are Nritta, which is pure dance, Nritya, which is footwork and expressions, and Natya, which is storytelling. 
This evening, our dancer displayed a perfect blend of all three elements in each of the four dances you witnessed so far, with the varna, which will be our next item, being the most elaborate and showcases the versatility and skill of the dancer, as this piece combines the complex footwork patterns and the expressive art through the storytelling. I'm also going to introduce Varna, which is going to be, like I said, the next item, and then we'll see where Sai is. If not, then we'll, have, we'll talk about something else. So the Varna, as I said, which is the centerpiece, is the, is the song that was chosen for this evening is called Simha Vahini, a composition of Sri Madurai Murlihar. It's a central and complex composition that serves as the centerpiece of a dancer's repertoire. It is a multifaceted piece that combines intricate footwork, expressive gestures, facial expressions, and rhythmic patterns to showcase the dancer's technical prowess, emotive depth, and storytelling abilities. The varnam typically consists of both swara, which is the pure dance, and sahitya, which is the lyrical sections, allowing the dancer to display a wide range of skills and emotions. The sahitya portions often narrate mythological stories or express devotional themes, while the swara passages feature intricate rhythmic patterns and sequences. As the longest and most challenging item in a Bharatanatyam performance, the varnam requires exceptional stamina, agility, and interpretive skills from the dancer. It is often considered the highlight of a recital, demonstrating the dancer's mastery of the art form and ability to captivate the audience with the grace and expression. Simha Vahini is an enchanting song dedicated to Goddess Durga, celebrating her divine strength and protective grace. The song vividly portrays the Goddess Durga seated majestically atop a lion in the form of Sri Rajeshwari adorned with weapons and garlands, symbolizing her fearlessness and power. The song glorifies the goddess's attributes, including her compassion, valor, and ability to dispel darkness, while invoking her blessings for protection and prosperity. Within each stanza this evening, Guru, Guru Bina Menon, with a brilliant choreography, weaves in a dedication on the various goddesses, starting with Durga Devi, then Parvati Devi, Lakshmi Devi, and then Saraswati Devi. Through this melodious rendition, we are reminded of the indomitable spirit of the goddess and her unwavering commitment to safeguarding her devotees. So let's immerse ourselves in the divine energy of Simha Vahini and seek the blessings of Goddess Durga for protection and well-being. Varnam is in Ranjani Ragam and Adhikara.
Oh, 
brilliant performance by the So it's now time for the diploma ceremony. It's a well-deserved recognition of the staff of this evening by her loving guru. I welcome Guru Veena Menon and Saidi to come to the stage. at the same venue in March of 2022. So, Saili definitely is following the footsteps of her mother and her sisters, very, very fortunate. And at least I know we all feel that she has cultivated this passion of this divine art form, um, and we are very fortunate to actually witness that. So, let's give her a big round of applause. Indian mythology. To be able now to portray the stories I've read 
since I was small, like the Ramayana have, has been so fulfilling. The Anansi has given, me, has given me this connection to my culture that I will always have. The Anansi, thank you so much for giving me this amazing opportunity and experience I will never forget. Knowing that you have faith in me gives me the confidence to try to accomplish anything. Next, I want to thank my older sisters, Sanjana and Shivani. You are both my role models. I aspire to be as kind, supportive, and caring as both of you. You have taught me to strive for great things and not be afraid of the hard work that's required. I admire your worth ethic, perseverance, and patience. I remember the hard work you put into your own Arnhem and probably have added about 100 videos to your YouTube video. I love you both so much and cannot imagine my life without both of you. Thank you to my mom and dad. Your love and support has guided me throughout this rigorous process. You always make me feel like I can achieve anything. I know my dad still believes he's the king of Just Dance on our Xbox. <laughs> I think my dance skills might have come from both sides of the family. I don't want a rematch. I love you both so much. <laughs> Thank you to my grandmother, Amama. You are the strongest and most loving person I know. You are my constant. I know you are always there for me, ready to take on anyone or anything that gets in my path. I love coming home from school and laying on your lap to tell you about my day. Any stress I have melts away when I'm with you. I love you so much, and you inspire me. Thank you to all my family, friends, and teachers who are here to support me. I hope you enjoyed the show and are ready for the second half. Thank you. I know we are all eagerly waiting for the second half, but before that, we will now have Saidi's sisters, Sanjana and Shivani, to come up and uh, say a few words.
Siley, I know you're busy backstage, but when you do hear this speech, I want you to know that you are an inspiration to me. And there's nobody else I would rather call my little sister. Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, Sanjana and Shivani. Siley's truly blessed to have two older sisters that also serve as such wonderful role models to her. So it is a beautiful relationship, so enjoy that. Um, so the next, next item is uh, in the Kuchipuni Taranga. What I'll do is I'll give you a little bit of a background about, the, about Kuchipuni, which is the, the second dance style that we're going to witness, and then we'll talk a little bit about the item itself. Kuchipudi is a classical dance form that originated from a village named Kuchipudi in the state of Andhra Pradesh. It's a dance drama performance with its roots in the ancient Hindu Sanskrit text of Natya Shastra and connects traditionally with temples, spiritual beliefs and faiths with a strict set of discipline code and units that have to be followed. This ancient da dance form dates back to the 10th century. It is characterized by its graceful movements, intricate footwork, and dynamic storytelling. Story Kuchwari often combines elements of dance, music, and drama, and it includes both solo and group performances. The repertoire of Kuchwari includes a variety of items, such as Nritta, which is again pure dance, Abhinaya, or the expressive dance, and Bachika, which is verbal expression. The most popular and challenging piece in Kuchipudi is called the Tarangam. Tarangam is a unique item in the Kuchipudi dance repertoire where the dancer performs intricate footwork while balancing on the edges of a brass plate. This challenging piece requires precision, balance and control as the dancer executes complex rhythmic patterns while moving across the plate. This evening's Kuchipuri Tarangam is Adam Chidambaram, a Carnatic composition by Sri Gopalakrishna Bhartiya, a renowned comp composer in the Carnatic music tradition. The song praises Lord Nataraja, the deity worshipped in Chidambaram temple in Tamil Nadu. Chidambaram, which means the stage of consciousness, holds immense spiritual significance particularly for followers of Lord Shiva. The lyrics describe the grandeur and divine presence of Lord Nataraja, the cosmic dancer, who symbolizes the cycle of creation and destruction. The summary of the lyrics would include descriptions of the majestic temple of Chidambara, the glory of Lord Nataraja's dance, and the devotion of devotees who witnessed his divine performance. The song often invokes spiritual imagery and metaphors to convey the profound significance of Lord Nataraja's presence. Taranga often narrates stories from Hindu mythology and is accompanied by expressive gestures and facial expressions. In this evening's performance, Sai will depict two stories in the Taranga. The first story is the timeless tale of Markandeya, a revered sage from Hindu mythology. Markandeya was born to parents who were devout worshippers of Lord Shiva. However, destiny had something extraordinary in store for him. It was foretold that he would live only for 16 years. As Markandeya grew, his parents instilled in him the values of righteousness and devotion. Determined to defy his fate, Markandeya immersed himself in prayer and meditation, seeking the blessings of Lord Shiva. On the fateful day when he turned 16, Lord Yama, the god of death, arrived to claim his life. Markandeya, undeterred, clung to the lingam which is the symbol of Lord Shiva, and fervently prayed for protection. Impressed by Markandeya's unwavering devotion, Lord Shiva appeared before him in all his divine glory. 
with a flick of his trident. Lord Shiva subdued Ram Yama and granted Markandeyan the boon of immortality. The second story is that of Manmadha, also known as Kamadeva or God of Love. One day, when Lord Shiva was deeply immersed in meditation, Manmada, at the behest of other gods, sought to disrupt his trance-like state by aiming his arrows of love at him. Ignoring warnings and driven by pride, Manmada unleashed his arrows, hoping to arouse feelings of passion in Lord Shiva. Enraged by this intrusion, Lord Shiva opened his third eye, unleashing a fiery inferno that reduced Manmadha to ashes in an instant. This tragic event serves as a powerful reminder of the consequences of arrogance and the limits of desire. Manmadha's sacrifice, however, did not go in vain, as it ultimately led to a deeper understanding and reverence for the power of love and devotion. Tarandam is in Ragam Deha and Tarandam Adi. So the reason Sai uh, chose this song, it is in dedication to her Amama, Mrs. Varalakshmi Sundar, who herself is from Chidambar. So Sai wanted to dedicate this song to you. for those of us who may not be familiar with what an Alangetram is. An Alangetram is a significant milestone and traditional debut performance of a dancer, marking the formal entry into the world of dance. The term Alangetram comes from the Tamil language where Arangu means stage and Yetram means ascending or climbing which then literally it translates to ascending the stage. During an Arangetram, the dancer presents a full-length solo Bharatanatyam performance, typically lasting for about two to three hours. And Arangetram is also used for other, other dance perform uh, styles, which includes Kuchipuri Mohiniyatam as well. This performance showcases the dancer's proficiency in various aspects of the dance form, including adabus, which is the basic steps, abhinaya, and the intricate rhythmic patterns. <coughs> Arangetram is preceded by years of rigorous training under the guidance of a guru or a teacher, during which the dancer learns the techniques, repertoire, and nuances of Bharatanatyam. It is considered a culmination of the dancer's dedication, hard work, and artistic growth. Family, friends, dance enthusiasts, and members of the community are invited to attend the Arangetram to support and celebrate the dancer's achievement. It is a festive occasion marked by traditional rituals, blessings from elders, and a reception following the performance. The successful completion of an Arangetram is a significant accomplishment for a dancer, signal, signaling her readiness, his or her readiness, to pursue a career in dance and contribute to the preservation and promotion of this rich uh, cultural heritage. So that's a little bit about what an Arangetram is, a little bit about Bharatanatyam Kuchipuri. I think we just need a few more minutes. Uh, we could do, I'm just trying to see if yeah, thank you. Are we ready? Yeah, okay. So, you know what? Shweta has a great Shweta, and um, Srimurti, Mamidana, and Srimurti Balachandran, and Pavitra Sundar, they'll come and share a short interlude with us. Right? I think we'll enjoy their performance. So, let's invite them to the stage.
She's a disciple a dance of uh, a dance exponent and perfectionist Kala Mandalam Natanam Gopalakrishnan and started learning dance at the age of two and a half years old. Srimati Veena Menon trained in Bharatanatyam, Kuchipuri, Mohiniyattam and Kathakali and established Kalashri School of Arts in 1992. She's been teaching and choreographing for 42 years and has personally trained over 2,000 students in these dance forms. She has also choreographed and organized several dance shows in the U.S. Kalashri School of Arts has won several com competitions and best costume awards in national and international dance competitions. Her students have also won solo national competitions in the United States. Guru Bina Menon has had the opportunity to perform and travel worldwide with Bollywood's dream girl, Hema Malini. Guru Meena Menon and her students have had the honor to perform with Bollywood's Meenakshi Sheshadri, world-renowned dancer and actress Padmini Ji, Shobhana Ji, Vineet, Mohan Lal, and musicians like KJ Yesudas, Kumar Shanu, Udit Narayan, Alka Yagnik, and Sukhwinder Singh. Her students have also performed for the former U.S. President Bill Clinton at the New at the New, New Jersey Go Governor's Inauguration, the New York Governor's Fundraiser, at the United Nations, and also at Madison Square Garden during Indian Prime Minister Mr. Modi's visit to New York. Students of Kalashri have auditioned for the Oscar Awards and were selected to perform in 2009 during A.R. Rahman's Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire Oscar Awards. Kalashri won the Best Performance and Best Costume Awards at the World Dance Competition in Barcelona, Spain. And most recently, they won the first place in Italy's World Dance Competition, also first place for the Best Costume in the World, and the Academy for Arts Award for 2020. Let's give, give them a big round. Kalashri have performed during Miami's Heats and Nets play basketball halftime at the Izod Sports Arena in New Jersey and Prudential Center during the, New during the NHL game halftime. Srimati Veena Menon has choreographed an off-Broadway show, a Ramayana ballet, Krishna Leela, Birth to Resurrection of Jesus in Bharatanatyam, the concept of the five elements, four seasons, Saving the Rainforest and Sita Swayamvar. <laughs> Srimati Veena Menon paints, designs clothing, costumes, jewelry, and has won several awards for best costume nationally and at international competitions. She encourages her students to take part in many dance performances to improve their skills, confidence, and self-esteem. She encourages her students who have done their arangetrams to continue dancing and enjoy the art form to the fullest with added awareness. An arangetram is certainly not the conclusion, but rather the beginning of the making of an accomplished dancer, and several students have been fortunate to perform their arangetram under Guru Veena Menon's guidance. They not only learn dance, but they're also trained to make costumes. Guru Veena Menon has been awarded the Kerala Ratna, Gem of Kerala title, from Philadelphia Art Panel, and was recently selected to be one of seven Keralites to be bestowed with an award by the World Malayali Council for promoting art and culture in America. Kalashri has had the privilege of performing at the Carnegie Hall in New York in 2019, 2022, and 2023. In 2023, Srimati Veena Menon choreographed and introduced Alalipu, a pure dance form in Mohini Atam, a classical dance from Kerala, and is looking forward to adding more classical work into this dance repertoire. Srimati Veena Menon is looking forward to upcoming events for this year, uh, 
actually, I'm sorry, that was last year that she uh, had, she and her school participated in the World Cultural Festival that was held in Washington, D.C. in September. And Walt Disney uh, World's Florida history making first ever Diwali dance festival that was held in October of 2023. And further serving the community, helping children and teens to understand their roots and get involved in, in a constructive and disciplined manner. So let's give Srimati Meera Menon a big welcome. style that we just witnessed um, is traditionally performed by all males troupe and the male dancers would also play the female roles. The dance style was also rendered as a team performance with roots in Hindu religious festivals. The song lyrics are generally in Telugu and sung in Carnatic style similar to Bharatanatyam. But of course, you know, as with any um, dance style in, in, in India, we've seen that it's really about taking a song and really expressing it in, in through this art form. So while in the past, perhaps it was more traditionally, tradition, traditionally like Telugu songs were chosen, now we also see other um, languages, songs from other languages being used, just like we saw this evening, right? Uh, the the, the Tarangam was actually in Tamil, um, so it's not unusual to see that. Um, Kuchipuri also shares many postures and expressive gestures with Bharatanatyam, such as the Aramandali, which is the half-seating position or partial squat, legs bent or knees flexed out. But there are some important differences, such as uh, Bharatanatyam has the geometric perfection, and while Kuchipuri uh, has a more of a sensual, supple, uh, and has a little bit of, at times, a folksy type of uh, uh, flair to that. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the next item, which is Hanuman Chalisa. It is a devotional bhajan, which is composed by the famous poet Sri Goswami Tulsidas, in dedication to Lord Hanuman, a revered de deity in Hinduism, known for his strength, devotion, and loyalty to Lord Rama. The Chalisa is composed of 40 verses, each of which holds significance in Hindu mythology and spirituality. It praises Lord Hanuman's virtues, recounts his exploits, and seeks his blessings for protection, courage, and wisdom. Hanuman Chalisa emphasizes the power of devotion, the importance of righteousness, and the belief in divine grace. Lord Hanuman is the God of life, whose worship increases life force, which gives us strength to do anything, removing fear, mistrust, and doubt from within us. Hanuman Chalisa that has been chosen today is in Abadi, which is a dialect of Hindi spoken in Ayodhya, which is Lord Rama's birthplace. It will be sung in Ragamalika and Adi Mala. Again, uh, this is a very special song to Saidi because she told me that she, along with her sisters, Sanjana and Shivani, performed it for their grandmother's 70th birthday. And I'm sure that love and devotion to her grandmother will come through today again um, when, when Saidi comes and performs for us this evening. Um, so, we'll wait for her to, um, let me see if she's ready, if not, she is ready.
just want to get the stage ready for you. So I need to come.
song with us. I'm now invite Saidi's uncle, Mr. Shankar Sundaram, to the stage. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Um, it's wonderful to see all the faces in the crowd and you know there are so many of these faces are the same faces that have supported us throughout our whole life so thank you so much for, for being here for Saidi. Um, in particular I wanted to thank my aunt, Abhilanti, for being here. Uh, it really does mean a lot and just seeing you, Abhilanti, um, it's hard for me to not think about another really, really important person who is not here, but my grandmother, who would be over the moon about watching Saidi perform today. Uh, Saidi was always the baby baby of the family. Uh, for me, my three original babies were my three shooting star nieces, <laughs> who, um, who honestly are the reason why I have these two guys now, because I just was in love with these three uh, for so many years. Um, I had some time on the flight from Seattle yesterday uh, to think about and reminisce um, about these three wonderful girls and how much they've impacted my life. And in particular, the, the little one, Siley, who in so many ways is my kindred spirit. Um, Siley is a, a tinkerer. Siley is an engineer. Siley, Siley can spend five days working on a bow and arrow made of string, toilet paper holders, toilet paper uh, centers, and, and she'll continue, she would continue to show me each iteration. Like, look, Shankar Mama, this one goes further, this one goes straighter. And at the end of the thing, she had a bow and arrow that was shooting arrows 20 yards um, with fairly good accuracy. Yeah, so, you know, just amazing because in so many ways, that's how I was when I was a kid. Um, I can't, I'll never forget Siley getting under the sink with me at Savan Sikkin's house, working on the garbage disposal. <laughs> and it was clogged. And she's like, Shankar Mama, I have this wrench. I think it's going to work great. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Um, but just really, really just an amazing girl uh, in, in so many ways. Um, what, it, what, it, what makes Siley different than the other, the other two is this fierce independence. I think, you know, the other two were a little closer in age. Um, sometimes they were mean girls <laughs> to, to, my, to my little one, um, you know, excluding her out of all their fun. Um, but you know, Siley formed this attitude about it where she really just didn't care. Um, she would just independently go do her own thing to the point where the other two would get curious, what's Siley doing? Let me actually go participate in her games. And for me, you know, coming home from Seattle, Sally and I would spend a lot of time, one-on-one, -on -one, just playing her games. Um, watching her grow, watching her be this independent spirit um, has been one of the joys of my life. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's, there's so many things that I could continue to say about Sally, but um, the reality is that, that that independence and that ability to, to just be herself, be content with herself, um, be very happy about the moment, is something that we can all learn from. Uh, I think every, each and every one of us in the room. Um, so I too am sad that there aren't any more Shaw girls in the pipeline uh, <laughs> to uh, perform in Arangetum, um, primarily because then I don't, you know, it's, it's what brings all of you together and all these faces together and all these amazing people who have been there throughout our life. Um, and it's just joyous every time we get to see all of you. So. Uh, we love all of you very much, Saili, and I love you so much when you hear this. You know me and you will always be with the Steves, um, and you'll always be a very, very, very special part of my life. So, thank you. Saili is indeed very lucky to have a mama like that. That's such a beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, and we get to know Saili too. So, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I'll now invite Dr. Subha and Dr. S uh, Sukin Shah to come up to the stage for the vote of thanks.
just want to thank um, you know Bhagwan, uh, my parents, um, you know for for me being truly blessed. Uh, they would be so proud of Sally if they were here. Um, you know on days like today, especially uh, you know they're really missed. Um, but you know lucky to have my family, uh, my beautiful wife Suba, uh, my brother, my sister. Uh, my Daka, my Dakis, uh, my Mama, my Mommies, um, Foy, Fuaz, my brother in law's family. You know, as a growing up as an ABCD person, it just it took me a while to learn all the different uh, iterations of this as opposed to Uncle and Auntie. But I, I want to just say, you know, uh, like Shunker said, all of you being here is what really makes it special. And, you know, spending time with family and friends um, is, is really what makes today, uh, you know, unique. Uh, and, you know, thank you to all my cousins that have come, uh, all of uh, Subo's cousins that have come. And, uh, you know, just from, so just th thank you everyone. <laughs> Just a few administrative points. Um, you know, dinner will be served in, in the adjacent uh, ballroom after the show. And, um, you know. Um, I guess I'm on administrative duty. <laughs> uh, but before I get to that, I just want to, I would be remiss. We thanked so many people, but um, I, I am thinking about my grandmother and my mama, mommy. Um, and my in-laws, um, people who aren't here today with us, but um, we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, so after the performance, we really are hoping that all of you will come to the stage and take a picture with Siley. Um, we want these beautiful memories forever. I already told you we rewatched the Iron Gage Room on YouTube over and over again. We want to see all of you. Um, and once again, uh, as Sukhan said, this is special because of all of you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the wonderful speech, um, Dr. Suba and Dr. Sukhan. Um, I'm going to speak about Moini Atta. This is the next dance style um, that we are about to witness. Uh, this is also a traditional dance form that originated in the state of Kerala in India. It is characterized by graceful movements, intricate footwork, and expressive gestures performed to the accompaniment of, again, classical Carnatic music. The dance is usually performed by women who wear white or off-white traditional attire with golden, uh, the, the off -white, white or off-white traditional sari actually, with golden borders. And the costume accentuates the elegance of the dancer's movements. Moiniyatam typically includes a repertoire of both rhythmic and expressive pieces. The rhythmic compositions known as the Arabus showcase the dancer's mastery of footwork and intricate rhythmic patterns. The expressive pieces called Padams involve storytelling through gestures, facial expressions, and eye movements, again often depicting themes from the Hindu mythology or folklore. The, mo the movements in Mohini Atam are characterized by flowing and graceful gestures with emphasis on fluidity and flexibility. The dance form places a strong emphasis on lasya, or the feminine aspect of dance, portraying emotions such as love, devotion, and longing. In ancient times, it was only performed in the temples of Kerala and the royal courts. In the 19th century, Maharaja Swati Tirunal of Travancore highly patronized the dance, and it evolved as a solo dance form based on Carnatic music again. Unfortunately, during the British colonial rule in India, there was a period of decline of this dance form just like other indigenous dances. However, it was revived by the famous poet Vanatho Narayana Menon, who established the Kerala Kala, Kala Mandalam to promote both Moini Artam and Kathakali 
which is another classical dance from Kerala. Mohiniyattam is celebrated for its enchanting beauty, subtle expressions, and intricate foot choreography, making it a very cherished art form in Indian classical dance tradition. Our last item for this evening is called the Tilla. Tillana is a lively and energetic piece that is commonly performed as the concluding item in a classical dance recital. It is characterized by its fast, fast-paced rhythm, intricate footwork, and vibrant choreography. The lanas are typically set to a specific rhythmic pattern or the tala and feature repetitive sequence that showcase the dancer's virtuos virtuosity and mastery of rhythm. The lanas are often accompanied by vocal percussion or kunnakulu and are intended to captivate the audience with their dynamic and celebratory nature. So the Tilana for this evening will be executed in the Mohini Artem dance style and serves as a joyous ode to Lord Krishna, inviting the audience to revel in the beauty and devotion associated with the divine persona of the beloved deity. The lyrics of this song include references to Lord Krishna's exploits as a child, his enchanting flute music, and his playful interactions with the gopis or the cowherd maidens of Vrindavan. Sai will then transport us to the idyllic landscapes of Vrindavan as we witness the joyous celebration of Holi by the divine couple. And as we all know, Holi was celebrated earlier this week. So we'll get to celebrate Holi on the stage today. Lord Krishna and, and Radha with cheeks adorned with hues of red, blue, and yellow, engage in a playful banter and mischief, chasing each other amidst clouds of colored powder and water. Their laughter echoes through the groves of Vindavan as they immerse themselves in the joyous spirit of Holi. Tilana will be followed by Mangalam, a short prayer offered to the deities before concluding the recital. This prayer, known as the Mangalam, seeks the divine blessings for the well-being of everybody, thanking the guru, orchestra, parents, and elders for a successful completion of the dance journey. The Ratham for Tilana is Brindavana Saraka, and it will be in, and the Talam is Adi. Mangalam is uh, in Saurashtra Ragam, in Adi Talam, and it's a composition of Sri Tyagaraja Swami. Mom, Yana, Now I know what you guys are thinking. This, this is not my third speech, but in my thank yous, I forgot a few people. Mostly the orchestra. Can we give a round of applause to the orchestra? And of course, a round of applause for our wonderful MC. Videographer uh, Paul Martin, our photographer Tarun Coilet and KK Photography, uh, our facilities director Anil, and our stage and puja decorations by Girija from Rainbow Events, and our sound engineer uh, Sujit, who's uh, made everything sound amazing. And as soon as I sat down, I thought to myself, and I have to say, we are, we are missing our, my periapas. And all anyone else, please don't take this as I've forgotten you. We love all of you, and um, you, we're, we're thinking all of you have shaped us and made this day possible. So, thank you. Another chair of where our dancer is. If not, we'll try something else. Why not? We'd love to hear from you. 
this is your day, so you have every right to be on the stage once more. Actually, how about Dr. Uh, Simba, why don't you dance with us? <laughs> we would love that. <laughs> of whether Saini is ready or we're ready? Beautiful. We are ready. So we will be starting Kulana, which will be followed by Mangala. And, and while our Guru and orchestra are sitting down, I just want to again take this opportunity to thank Guru Dena Menon, Dr. Subha and Dr. Sukhin Shah for entrusting me to be the MC for this evening. And thank you for being the best audience. You, none of you held back when it came to encouraging and supporting our dancer this evening. And, you know, Sai was able to uh, really pour her heart and soul into what you witnessed this evening. So please give yourselves a round of applause.
right side. Otherwise, I can't put it in. So you have to decorate that first. So that, right, because if I put it in,
October, I'm done. I don't mind.